Every day, the fat director came to the station to catch his train, and he always said hello to Thomas. There were lots of trucks in the yard; different ones came in every day, and Thomas had to push and pull them into their right places. He worked hard. He knew now that he wasn't so clever as he had thought. Besides, the fat director had been kind to him, and he wanted to learn all about trucks so as to be a really useful engine. But on a siding by themselves were some trucks that Thomas was told he mustn't touch. There was a small coach, some flat trucks, and two queer things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train, he said. When there's an accident, the workmen get into the coach, and the engine takes them quickly to help the hurt people, and to clear and mend the line. The cranes are for lifting heavy things like engines and coaches and trucks. One day, Thomas was in the yard when he heard an engine whistling, "Help! Help!" and the goods train came rushing through much too fast. The engine, a new one called James, was frightened. His brake blocks were on fire, and smoke and sparks streamed out on each side. "They're pushing me! They're pushing me!" he panted. "On! On! On! On!" laughed the trucks, and still whistling, "Help! Help!" Poor James disappeared under a bridge. I'd like to teach those trucks a lesson," said Thomas the tank engine. Presently, a bell rang in the signal box, and a man came running. "James is off the line! The breakdown train! Quickly!" he shouted. So Thomas was coupled on. The workmen jumped into their coach, and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. "Hurry! Hurry! Hurry!" he puffed. And this time, he wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those trucks and their tricks! He thought. I hope poor James isn't hurt. They found James and the trucks at a bend in the line. The brake fan and the last few trucks were on the rails, but the front ones were piled in a heap. James was in a field with a cow looking at him, and his driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James. They said it wasn't your fault. It was those wooden brakes they gave you. We always said they were no good. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled the unhurt trucks out of the way. Oh dear! Oh dear! They groaned. Serves you right. Serves you right," puffed Thomas crossly. When the men put other trucks on the line, he pulled them away too. He was hard at work puffing backwards and forwards all the afternoon. This'll teach you a lesson. This'll teach you a lesson," he told the trucks. And they answered, "Yes, it will. Yes, it will," in a sad, groaning, creaky sort of voice. They left the broken trucks and mended the line. Then, with two cranes, they put James back on the rails. He tried to move, but he couldn't. So Thomas helped them back to the shed. The fat director was waiting anxiously for them. Well, Thomas," he said kindly, "I've heard all about it, and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint, and you shall have a branch line all to yourself." "Oh, sir," said Thomas happily. Now Thomas is as happy as can be. He has a branch line all to himself. 
and pups proudly backwards and forwards with two coaches all day. He is never lonely because there is always some mention to talk to at the junction. Edward and Henry stop quite often and tell him the news. Gordon is always in a hurry and does not stop, but he never forgets to say poop poop to little Thomas. Thomas always whistles peep peep in return. <laughs>